These have been challenging times, but the body of Christ has proven itself resilient. We've gathered in different ways, in different places, yet stood steadfast as the church. We have found peace in God's promise to never leave us or forsake us. In our separation, we have remained united. In our struggle, we have lived out our faith. In the midst of the unknown, we have leaned on the strength of an all-knowing God. Throughout history, the church has thrived in adversity, and this moment is no different. The power of God is unstoppable, His love unending, His grace unrelenting, His glory undeniable. Today, no matter where we gather, we remain God's people. Our mission has not changed. Our calling has not been altered, and nothing, absolutely nothing, will ever change that. We are the church, and today we stand resilient. Hello once again. It is my awesome opportunity or privilege to introduce the speaker for this hour. It is none other than Sister Barbara Spencer. And for those of us who uh, know her and have a relationship with her, you'll know she is just a wonderful soul, a very caring and personable individual. Uh, she actually, during this season of sickness, this time of COVID, um, being the leader of our Sabbath school ministry, was able to actually grow the ministry as we were forced to transition to uh, virtual Sabbath school. And I want to thank her for her leadership and just her willingness to be used by the Holy Spirit uh, during this time of challenge. Now, she'll be the one who will be blessing us with the word today. And it couldn't have come at a more opportune time. The sermon title is Still I Will Trust Him. And for those of you who have had loss, I know I have had one uh, recently in my father passing. And for those who have suffered uh, different setbacks uh, that was caused by the enemy, I ask that you position yourself to hear a word of encouragement from God. But just before Barbara shares this word today, we are going to be blessed by a song, a, 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 a ministry in music by Sister Ladine Dow. And then the next voice you will hear will be that of our very own Barbara Spencer. When you're up on the mountain And you've got peace Like you've never known But things change when When you're down in the valley Just don't lose hope for you're never alone For the God on the mountain Is still God in the valley When things go wrong He'll make them right And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times and the God of the day is still God in the night we talk of faith way upon the mountains but talk 
comes easy when life's at its best now it is down in the valleys of temptation that's when your faith is truly put to the test for the God on the mountain is still God in the valleys when things go wrong he makes them right and the God of the good times he's still God in the bad times and the God of the day is still God in the night and the God of the day he's still God in the night Today I come to lift up the name that is above all names so speak my Lord speak through the silence and then speak through the loud and banging noises of the world. Speak, my Lord. Speak through a loud voice or speak in the still small voice, but speak, my Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will give me boldness and clarity of word, and then open my ears to hear only you so that a a soul that is longing to hear your word will go away satisfied and change. I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor that is due to your high, exalted, and lifted name. Amen. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and verse 18. And I will read in your hearing. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, and though the labor of the olive be fall, and the fields yield no food, and though the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stall. Verse 18 says, yet, and I say for emphasis, yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. This beautiful climax to the book of Habakkuk is as he contemplates the impending judgment of Judah at the hand of the Babylonians. Yet, I note that the prophet never lost his hope. Instead, he continues to trust God in spite of the daunting circumstances. My brothers and my sisters, my friends locally and internationally, suffering and hardship is not foreign to any of us. Often, I too have experienced suffering. And often I would remonstrate with God about my own struggles as I seek for answers. I would cry out, Lord, why have you not answered me? And how is it that my prayers are not heard? But in those times of questionings, I would go to the book of Job. Can I get a witness? Job. It was there that I realized that I was not alone. This was a test of fate. Have you ever felt that sometimes Satan has called your name? Have you ever wondered why Job had to go through all of this when he was a faithful man? Job said, I look to the east and I look to the west. I turn to the north and I turn to the south. But he was not there. Yet, he knows the way I take it. Is that hide and seek? But I made an interesting observation that even though Job lost everything and felt abandoned, he did not relinquish his trust in God. Yet he exclaimed, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You see, my friends, unexpected things happen. And I want to think that the pandemic 
is one of those things. I would like to bring to your attention that although in the pandemic we suffered, it brought people's attention to God. Sometimes your life takes a wrong turn. Sometimes, though you, it's true your choices, but there are times when God simply wants to get your attention. As a person of faith, where are you placing your confidence and trust? Is it in your job, your boss, your spouse, your children, in the politician, in your bank account? Well, if any of the above is true, may I hasten to caution you that jobs don't last. Politicians don't tell the truth. Friends are disloyal and untrustworthy. Children are ungrateful. And even, you say, but not my spouse. Spouse betray. Spouse walk out. It's a hard pill to swallow. My friends, let me hasten to declare that, that it is only the only constant in our lives. The only constant is God Almighty. Amen. I have a message for you today. Stand still and hear what God has to say. In order for you and me to survive this challenging, unpredicted time, unprecedented times of earth closing history, we must develop a closer relationship with God. Friends, we need more than just a religious experience or having a form of godliness. There is no guarantee in sitting on the peripheries of life. What we need is a committed relationship with a true and living God. We need naked faith. We need naked faith to take us through the quagmire of this messed up world. You have to learn to trust God when you don't see his hand and you don't understand. When you feel this courage, trust God. When your friends have abandoned you and things get hard, trust God and then trust him some more and then trust him until the heavens fall. Sometimes in our relationship with God, we won't always feel his presence. Notice the operative word, feel. You see, in our relationship, our relationship cannot be built on feelings for no how, matter how things are and how deep or intimate our relationship with God, things, things change. Would you agree? Yes. You see, life is easy when you're on the mountaintop. Thank you so much, my friend, for singing such a beautiful song. For It, it is fitting for this today's sermon. Life is at its best, but when you're down in the valley, when trials and tribulation comes your way, then that's really when your fate is put to the test. But I want to declare, the song says, but the God of the mountain is still the God in the valley. And the God in, the, in your day is still the God in the night. And the God of the, uh, uh, God in, 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 in the, oh, come on, come on voice. And the God of the good times is still the God in the bad times. So tell me, church of the living God, what storm has swept your way and swept in your life today? Is it the storm of divorce? Betrayal of a friend? Betrayal in your marriage? The loss of a loved one, pastor? Are you feeling the storm of the thick fog, the storm of divorce, betrayal in your marriage? I repeat that. The loss of a loved one, the thick fog of a broken heart. And has the doctor? Yes. Has the doctor given you a sad news about a life-threatening condition? Are you feeling broken-hearted, discouraged, overwhelmed? Are you living with the pressure of having so much to do with so much little time, with no little, with limited time and resources in which to do it? Are you trying to put your best foot forward as a leader in the church, but somehow your best isn't good enough? Tell me, are you being criticized and misunderstood while trying to please everyone? 
Is your financial reservoir suffering from extensive drought, paralyzing your ability to adequately provide for your family? And tell me, to those who have jobs and wanting to go further, is a job promotion still pending? Young people, is yours a storm of peer pressure or a fear of, uh, of the uncertainty of the future? Finally, are you feeling emotionally and physically drained? Mentally exhausted and spiritually bankrupt? With all these questions, I'm sure you will begin to feel just that way. May I assure you, though, that God is a loving shepherd, and you will never, he'll never turn one of his children away. What he promised in the day, you can claim in the night. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings and eagle. They shall run and not fear. They shall walk and not faint, Isaiah 41. And before I close, I just want to tell you, I'm not closing yet, but just in case you think I'm going to close, I want to tell you four, four points, four points that I want to share with you that I think are of paramount importance to your survival and mine as we face the storms of life. Brace yourself. Please excuse me. One, you can trust Jesus because he's dependable. Two, you can trust Jesus because he understands suffering. Four, three, the lesson, there is a lesson to learn in suffering. And four, there is victory in suffering. Still, I will trust him. The word trust means to put your faith and confidence in a person put money in custodial care, or make a financial investment. And you would agree with me that it's very difficult to place your confidence in someone you have no relationship. Similarly, it would be very foolish and extremely foolish to invest your money with someone who has no banking experience or investment experience. May I assure you that you can place your entire future with Jesus, for with Jesus there is only capital gain. May I hasten to tell you that trust is a two-way street. You have to do your part. You can't leave everything to chance. And more importantly, and my investor sitting here today will tell you this is true. You have to check in with your investor. You have to understand how the stock market works. You see, sometimes you will experience what is called a bull market. Stock goes up, and other times there is a significant dip in the market, which is referred to as a bear market. Therefore, you have to know how to ride the tides of uncertainty until you're advised differently. All the time, he tells me something new, and then I wondered, why didn't I ask before? During the times of spiritual drought, you must learn how to patiently wait on the Lord and rely on his promise to get through these terrible times. But sadly, I find there is a problem in our thinking. You see, as humans, we're always seeking the mountaintop experience. What a wonderful place to be. See the, see the panoramic view. See the lush fields of green prosperity of health. Experience the exhilarating abundance of fresh air of God's goodness and miles and miles of breathtaking promises that God makes to you and you claim when you're on the mountaintop. What an amazing place to be. It is there you exclaim, God is good, and then you re-echo all the time God is good. But do you ever stop to think? It almost sounds sometimes like a cliche. God is good. You say, yes, God is good all the time, and all the time is good. But when hard times come, how good is God? You see, as Christians, there is no utopia for the Christians. There is no utopia in our world outside of the promises of eternal life. There is no bed of roses for the Christian. Life is real and so is sickness, death, and pain. Yes, bad things happen to good people. Or have you forgotten that Job was a good man? And Jesus 
the son of the living God, was a good person? Or have you forgotten the agonizing sacrifice made by him on our behalf? Jesus understands suffering, and I'm going to tell you how much he understands it. Dearly beloved people were the world uh, of the world, I stop here to let you know, before the foundation of the world, God saw the storms coming your way. And he took the necessary steps to help you withstand the devastating effects. He knew, he who knew no sin, took for you, the sin, upon himself, the sins of the world, your sins and mine. Yes, he's acquainted with your grief, and by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. Friends, he alone knows the intensity of your trials and your suffering. Won't you come with me and let me take you on a trust journey and show you how much Jesus understands your suffering? Let your mind's eye recollect the scene. I'm pausing so that your mind's eye will recollect the scene. For those of you who read the Bible. Can you see Jesus as he walks slowly up to Golgotha's mountain and then on to Calvary? Watch with me as he faints beneath the load of the cross he's carrying. He's not just carrying a load. He's carrying your sins and mine. Look, he's fainted. He is fainted beneath the load is too heavy. It is far too heavy, but he must go on. Watch as the angry crowd mob him. Can you see his friends? Where? What friends? Where is Peter who expressed his undying commitment to go with him all the way? See how they stripped him naked. Does your heart sh shudder with pity as they whipped him mercilessly and placed a thorn upon his head? But that's not all. See how they spat on him contemptuously and they mocked him. They can't stop now. They can't stop. The scripture must be fulfilled. And so they nailed the Son of God upon a cross with shame and inhuman suffering. And out they pierced his side but out from his bleeding side came love Amen. written in red. Amen. Can you trust Jesus? Can you really trust Jesus? Can you hear him as he cry out, Father, my Father, in desperation, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But God the Father looked away. He looked away from the gruesome sight and, and the Son of God, the Lord of creation that you and I sometimes have rejected and the world don't want. The Son of God died and gave up the ghost and died for you and me. Church of the living God, friends, there is your proof. Behold Jesus, you can trust him and he understands suffering. For it is true that great sacrifice that Jesus made that you and I are empowered to endure the rejection and the pain and the loneliness and the sadness and the grief and the loss. It is that great sacrifice that will lift your heavy burdens and shame and bring you safely through the storms. Can you say together with me in one harmonious voice, I will trust him. The second point, you can trust Jesus. He is dependable. In the book of 
John, St. John 11, 1 to 6, I can't read it for you, but you can go home and read it. Follow with me as we take a look at a familiar story that speaks about sickness and debt, disappointment and misunderstandings between friends. Can you relate to Martha and Mary? Do you need in immediate answers to your prayers? Where is Jesus when you need him? Jesus is dependable. Where is Jesus when you need him? Jesus knew how hurt Mary and Martha would be, yet he showed up four days late. How could he turn his back upon his very close friend, especially in their deepest times of need? Why does Jesus delay two more days? When Mary and Martha prayed, their sense of helplessness was reinforced, not only because something had bad had happened to their family, but when it happened, Jesus seemed hidden and out of touch, uncaring and remote and removed from their situation. Do you sometimes feel that way? You're afraid to say it? It is true, I feel that way sometimes, that I'm talking to God and he's far away. But see how dependable he is. You see, my friends, Mary and Martha with, in their griefs had forgotten that their best friend was the creator and the life giver. Instead of trusting him, all their attention was focused on the fact that Lazarus was dead and that Jesus had delayed in helping them when they needed him most. Is your Lazarus dead? Is your Lazarus depressed, discouraged, or spiritually bankrupt? Have you cried out to Jesus for help? How has Jesus responded? Has his lack of response caused you to question your faith? Or could it be that Satan has blinded your vision with the enormous burden you're carrying so that you have lost sight of the one who says, he who believes though he's dead, yet will he live. Amen. How can Lazarus live, you said, when he's already decomposed? Sounds like a paradox. You see, we humans are always seeking the mountaintop experience. What a wonderful place to be. What a paradox. My beloved sisters and brothers, visitors and, and friends, may I remind you that all is not lost, not even in death, pastor. When you know the life giver, Jesus can handle your fear, your doubt, your confusion, and your question. Picture with me, if you may, and let your mind eye, mind's eye view the scene of weeping and uncontrollable sob as Jesus finally shows up. I can hear Martha as she placed her, I can see Martha rather, as she placed her head upon her beloved Savior's breast. Lord, you came so late. Lazarus is dead and buried. Dead, you say? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Now watch Jesus as he patiently, lovingly persisted in developing Martha's faith until she was focused on him and him alone. Where is your focus? Picture his eyes penetrating her doubtful mind and into her bleeding heart and into the very depth of her soul. Are you still waiting for assurance? then turn your eyes upon Jesus, then look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Yes, Jesus was two days, four days late. He may not come when you call him, but I promise you, he'll come right on time. Yes, Jesus is dependable. And my third point, the lesson we learn. There's lessons to learn. Did you know that? Sometimes Jesus just have to simply shake us up a little bit so that we will understand that he's not a genie in a bottle. 
and that he really wants to save us, and that he didn't shed his blood for naught, and if he doesn't get your attention, you will be lost. World, you're looking on, and I'm here to tell you that Jesus really wants to save you. And that's why he gave his life. This is not a sermon to applaud and please. This is God speaking to your heart. This is God saying, my blood is sufficient. But let's move on. There is a lesson to learn in every trial, and I do believe that I have seen God more clearly in my pain and in my suffering. When all was going well with my life, sometimes I could not see it. But in my disappointments and my desperation, and while I was fighting to even keep my very sanity, I would remonstrate with God, and then he would say to me, not now. And then I say to him, how long? And then he would say to me, at the right time, I will respond. Isaiah 49 and verse 8, it is not easy to hear God's voice sometimes above the noise when you're hurting, but I, will, but I tell you, my friends, wait upon the Lord and trust him. He will bring you safely through. Wait upon the Lord and he will bring you safely through. For Habakkuk, and I read it for emphasis again, though I was tossed to and fro with every wind of situation, Habakkuk was my favorite book, and I went to the book of Habakkuk, and he says, though the fig tree not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vine, and though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields heal no food, and though the flock be cut off from the stalls, yet, yet I say, yet will I rejoice in the God of my salvation. Can you still trust Jesus? Amen. Coming to a close. You see, human beings are always seeking for the mountaintop experience. What a wonderful place to be. You have every reason to be there. Sometimes you misunderstand when God gives you blessing and you throw those blessings right back on him because you do not understand the bigger plans that God has for you. The Holy Spirit will show up in your situation when things seem hopeless. For he showed up in my situation and gave me peace in my sorrows and calm in my storms. Faith in my doubting and courage in my fears and strength in my weakness. At last, the scales were moved from my eyes and I began to see more differently. I began to learn more about, more, lean more about on Jesus despite my suffering and my hardship, I can de declare to you today unequivocally, still, world, looking on, still, I will trust him. You see, friends, timing is everything, but where you place your focus can make all the difference. Is your focus, where is your focus? Is it on the pain or on the problem the pain produces? If yes, I implore you to redirect your focus. Place it on the one who gives and gave, who gave his life for you. His joy will balance your pain and his power will lift your heavy burdens and his peace will calm your weary soul. His all sufficient grace is adequate to meet your storms. For gradually, <laughs> the light pierced through Martha's grief and her despair. I can see the tears dripping down her face as she affirmed with a beautiful conviction, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. Martha finally got it. Have you gotten it? Do you understand that Jesus is the life giver? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Are you desperate enough to place your faith on Jesus alone? His grace is adequate to meet your storms. Accept his timing. And the final point, and this is the most beautiful point, aside from Jesus' sacrifice, and I want you to hold on to your seats. There is victory. What do I say? 
There is victory, oh victory. I can see victory running up for the children of God. Jesus replied to Martha with a word of compassion that resonates through the centuries and is still resonating down through the ages and at the gravesides of many, giving hope and comfort to those who are faced with cancer and other dreaded disease, faced with our takes and challenging cir circumstances, those that have lost their, their family members to COVID, and those that have had trying times in the shutdown, I tell you, there's victory because Jesus has the answer to your suffering. I am the res I can see his loving arms as he placed them about Martha. He says to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Lazarus is not dead, he's only sleeping, John 11, 25. Do you believe? Do you believe your Lazarus will come back to life? Men and women of faith, do you believe that when there is no hope and there is no help and there is no way, there is no remedy and there is no one, and it seems that all your friends are gone, there is hope. Amen. There is hope in Jesus because you have a friend in Jesus. Singly, single women, women whose husbands have walked out in them, or husbands whose wife has betrayed them. Young people, when you feel alone and you have no arms to comfort you and no one to complain to, or to zip you up, or to run an errand, or to share a memory or a surprise, you have Jesus. You don't have to cry alone. He sees your tears. And he stores them up where? He stores them up in his bottle. Did you know that Jesus has a bottle for your tears? Young ladies and young men, as you face a challenge in times of manhood and womanhood, and you feel bewildered in making the right decisions, when peer pressure overwhelm you, don't give up. You can trust Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on him, for victory is on the way. Hold on, hold on. He will never leave you alone. Though he delayed four days, hallelujah, church, hallelujah. He showed up right on time and brought happiness again to his friend. For he spoke the life-giving word that echoes down through the ages, Lazarus. Comfort. Yes, there's victory in the name of Jesus. He can make you whole again. He can mend the broken pieces of your life. Women and men of faith, boys and girls, visitors and friends, television world, Facebook, all the platforms as you hear my voice crying out to declare the name of Jesus and to vindicate his character. Today, I encourage you, place your dependency on Jesus. Soar high like the eagle in faith. Soar high out of your comfort zone on the wings of fate, over the stratosphere and over the storms. There you will find how faithful Jesus can be when you learn to lean on him and trust him, and when the storm of suffering intensifies, soar higher in your relationship with Jesus, fall deeper in love with him, and grow stronger in your faith with him, and do more in service for him, and be more consistent in your walk with him. Like Martha, wipe the tears from your eyes. Lazarus is not dead. Jesus is here. His promises are true. His goodness is limitless and his love is matchless. I give you the one who you can depend upon. The one who brought Lazarus back to life. He is still the same, indestructible, incomprehensible, inescapable, invincible, 
irrefutable God, and his name is Jesus, and he's real, no matter how you feel. You can trust Jesus. You can trust Jesus. You can depend upon Jesus. World, you will never hear the sermon again. We may not. But I want to appeal to you, world. Jesus wants to come and save you. He has taken this little broken earthen vessel to bring hope to a dying world. But he's coming back again. Donna Marie will now help us bring you to that place of surrender. Sometimes when all is going good for you, you don't remember that you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your bodies and in your mind, which are our gods. I invite you in the hearing of my voice to recommit and surrender to Jesus. You have listened, the Son of God, the giver of eternal life, speak to you today. And he has declared that he understands your sufferings and your trials, and he has proven that he's dependable. And just like how he brought life to Mary and Martha, hope to them, and brought victory to them, you can claim victory today. So you can come to Jesus afresh if you're still in the valley of decision. Come and no longer tarry. Come to the altar of sacrifice and lay your burden down. The world won't last for much longer. The prints are upon the wall. Jesus is about to burst the skies. Come. I am not afraid to proclaim because he has brought me with a price. Use me, Father. Speak through me anything you want to say to your world. I am sold out to you. Donna Marie will bring you a hopeful message of a song, maybe one or two lines. When you're when things go wrong, still I will trust him, Donna Marie.
your name we thank you in the mighty and powerful and strong name of Jesus our Redeemer and King still I will trust him Trust him. After Job went through the test, he said, Job 42, verse 5, I have heard you, you by hearing of him, but now my eyes see you. Let God help us to continue to trust in Him. This sermon related to me strongly because two years today I lost my mom. And after two weeks, my bro young brother was murdered. Let God help me to go through. I still trust him. Here's a benediction for us. Jude 24, 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy 
to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Let God help us to be ambassadors for him this week and to give hope to people around us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching and for being a part of our worship experience here at Kendallwood. Now, if you've been blessed and you want to be a blessing, please go to our website, kendallwood.com, and under the Giving tab, you'll see ways to support our ministry. Also on our main page, you'll be introduced to a number of different ministries and activities that are happening here with the Kendallwood family. And if you want to be a part of this, or if simply you have a prayer request or something you want to share or ask, please uh, call us or email us at communications at May God richly bless you as you seek to serve him today.